Hi, in today's video, we're going to be riding Aragon for the second time only. And this is also going to be, of course, his first ride in the open arena as our introduction ride and first time mounting him happened in the Picadero. So, yeah, big steps and very important day for Aragon today. My name is Ray, founder of Horseflow Academy and author of the book Communicate with Your Horse. In today's video, we are just trying to progress and advance Aragon's basic education. And we've done uh, quite a decent amount of work over several days, just establishing a really solid foundation. Everything starts with a really good foundation. And once we established that foundation, I started introducing him to new things. And also as I was establishing that foundation, I was introducing things during those phases. And he accepted the saddle very well the first time. Um, he never bucked, um, I've not yet, asked him to move into a canter with the saddle on him so we'll be progressing as time goes on but not pushing him too far we're just stretching his abilities we're not breaking his abilities the moment you overreach a threshold you get a reaction and when a horse is in the reaction side of their mind and the sympathetic nervous system is aroused and the fear center or whatever you'd like to call it is lit up the amygdala and limbic system then you're working with a reactive horse and it's really difficult to deal with that mannerism and behavior as we've got a little very little influence at that point all right let's jump straight in uh, i haven't done any preparation this morning um yeah i gave him a day break after the first ride and i just mounted him and healed his body a little bit backed him up a step or two walked him a couple of steps forward and now we just gave him a full day break and we're gonna just progress straight on to putting on the tech gonna put on the saddle and then a hackamore and then we're gonna just warm him up a little bit from the ground just get him to move his body and remind him what the cues of the saddle mean the aids of the saddle mean and also the hackamore so yeah proper pre preparation prevents poor performance and then we'll hop on and quickly explain those things to him again and then advance to walk and then hopefully also as well do some trot and directional changes today with that all right let's get cracking I'm really not being overly careful as we've laid a foundation and we have introduced all the equipment. If he wants to walk off instead of him developing unwanted unwanted behavior, I just back him off. Whatever he does, I do the opposite. So he waits for me and then he responds like, oh, what do you want me to do next? What do you want me to do next? So all that we're doing is trying to translate with our horse what we are asking of them and also then just working with their mindset, not tiring them out and forcing them to do things for us by pure exhaustion or warning them that they're going to get exhausted when they do something wrong or just what about mindset. You still see I'm spending a lot of time not doing much. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to just really consolidate the information of being saddled up again, getting on the the bridle or the, the hackamore and then I'm gonna just run straight into the reins quickly we pull this pole down and it was quite nice with that backing up is really soft make sure I can ask him to bend his head and neck both ways he struggled with this quite a lot and there we go wow rest is just an amazing tool good boy now I'm going to aid him with the rein and I'm going to apply pressure to heal his hindquarter. Different sensation, different saddle. Good boy. Good boy. See, I'm, not, I'm just giving him micro releases and I keep on asking him next step, next step because he already understands the concepts. We've done the concept lessons. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, nice. Good boy. Now just do the same for the other side. And you see there's no need for any harsh behavior or using my body language. He already understands the difference between the stirrup leather pressure. 
And if he doesn't, I will assist him with further aids and cues and that's why I'm doing it from the ground so that if I need to, like right there, I'm using the rain first. All right, and then he, he responds quite well. There we go. So I'm not backing, just hind quarters. I'm using a vocal cue as that is what I can use once I'm on top of him. That was quite nice. Whilst the body is moving in this direction, I'm going to ask him to give me the shoulders. Just driving with the stirrup leather alone. Um, my contact with the reins was just what you can see there, which is basically nothing. So he really understands a leg at the front means to move my shoulders. Boy, now I'm applying a bit of rain just so that I get him to not walk off because he's tending to now lean and walk off forward. So trying to catch any unwanted behaviors developing from the beginning. Good boy, that was really nice. Just jump, jump straight in. We've got no need to worry too much about getting him ready in other ways. Just like I apply pressure and in that spot it means that if you please consider doing that for me I'd really appreciate that and I'll give you a moment of relaxation. Good boy. All right, I'm just gonna reframe the picture and then we're gonna mount and we're gonna just go through those same basic basic movements and being able to maneuver his body and get him quite soft and being able to back under saddle, which we've not established yet. And then also quite soft by walking forward under saddle and then teach him how to transition between a halt and walk, halt and walk. And if we can do that really well, walk to trot and then back down to, to uh, walk and halt and get him soft from the beginning Every single movement we're doing, we're trying to establish softness and confidence and clarity. And then we're going to try and get him to even just respond to our seat today. I want to be able to stop him on a complete loose rein on his second ride. Good boy. Okay. This is quite comfortable. The girth is really not too tight and make sure that the stirrups are more or less balanced. And then before we get on, I haven't moved his feet forward at all today. I'm just gonna go back to basics. Please back up for me. Thank you. And then just move, move his body around with this new saddle as well. It's the first time he's got the saddle on this. Yesterday was a, oh sorry, the day before yesterday. We left the day between the first mount and this one. Just make sure that we Maybe his whole body with a saddle, he's used to the stirrups touching him. Get him able to do a walk and a trot. Oh boy. Oh. Back back. Everything we've done to this point has developed a lot of softness and confidence within him. So we're just gonna keep on that progress and keep building on that. Again, just putting some leg pressure, get the hindquarters to heal really nicely. Micro releases every time I get him to respond. Good boy. I'm upping the energy a bit and just getting more consistency as we've already done really well with the foundation work and now we can have a bit more excitement into his movements. You see the periods of rest become much shorter once you start progressing on this little development phase where you've got a good foundation, understand the concepts. It's quite nice. I'm just using the reins it's the first time we do it with the reins really, but it's like you can see, not a problem at all. That's really quite nice. All right, now another big moment again. It's the same what I did with the reins the first time when I put up the hackamore. So make sure I can bend his head in quite nicely. All right, I'm reaching Aragon's threshold. So it's only the second time I'm out and 
and it's only the first time in the re so at the moment I put the stirrup in and I put it some weight on I breached his threshold so instead of forcing him me getting on I'm just releasing good boy yeah that's fine Asking his head and neck to drop a bit. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, same thing. Bending his head and neck in. So right there, I've reached his threshold again. So he's near the verge of backing today. So I'm just neutralizing him with a bend in the head and with a head in the neck. Taking my foot out of the stirrup, jumping down, and let's walk it off. Starting a horse is a dangerous feat, people. And preparation and a good feel and timing. You can hurt yourself and the horse and also develop very unforeseen behavioral developments with your horse from a young age. So today is the association that he has and builds with the arena and being ridden. We've really not done much work in here either, so asking quite a lot of you, my boy. Good boy. All right. So now I'm just moving my leg around a bit. I'm moving my body weight around and he's getting to accept it almost like the day before. Good boy. He bent his head and neck for me. He got quite soft. He's not running away from me. Good boy. Remember, we're trying to make progress. We're trying to grow and develop Aragon and educate him. So I'm trying to avoid stepping back too much. But fortunately, we've got a good foundation. So we can step back consistently whenever we need to. We just step back, boil things down to places and things that he understands. And then we reward him for doing those things. And then we go back. Okay, let's try and stretch you a bit more and start building again. And then we take it from there. Boy. Yeah, he's anticipating the body weight, so he's already trying to. Oh, he didn't move his feet this time. That's really nice. And he dropped his head and neck. Good boy. Nice. That's all right. You moved your head. Chasing a fly away, and I allowed him. All right, it's a big step for the day as he was trying to buck just a moment ago. So I'm, I need to try and be very quiet right now. The flies are quite irritating. But if I don't have control of the head and neck or influence over his head and neck at this point, I can be in big trouble really quickly. Good boy. Fine. Ask him just to heal his shoulders quickly, move his hindquarters. He's quite reactive this morning, so it's important for me to just establish really good foundation work quickly. I'm giving him quite a lot of freedom as this is where we left off with a previous session. And he did really well and I trusted him and it was in a more controlled environment. It was a bit more relaxed time of the day. So I'm asking him to yield his shoulders and he's moving his hindquarters. So we really not properly connected this morning and therefore I need to boil things down a bit. So instead of forcing him like, oh no, I asked your shoulders, give me your freaking shoulders. Uh, just see like, okay, cool. You're happy with giving me your head and neck to the left. And let's see if we can build on that. Cool. Good boy. He gives it to me really nicely. Now I'm gonna see if I can ask him to back. Good boy. And I reward him. See, he's automatically healing to my left foot now as sort of the, the exit response of, of relaxation because every time he does that, I release. And now he's looking and chewing his lips for the first time since I started mounting him. Good boy. Nice. All right, so we've got his head and neck to the left. I'm gonna gradually start asking his head and neck to the right. Whatever you wanna do on the one side, you need to be able to do it on the other side. 
Good boy, that's so nice, man. Hey. Now we're gonna move back to the body and our legs because that is asking quite a lot when a young horse, you ride them for the first or the second or the third time and they, they're looking like they wanna be bucking with you and then you apply leg pressure, you're gonna get a response that is <laughs> not necessarily what you're looking for. So before I apply leg pressure now, I'm just gonna gain a little bit more influence over the head and neck and then I'm gonna add on my leg. So I'm putting on my leg behind and I get a response and I release. Just to prove to him, you know, this pressure is not going to be consistent, it's going to be releasing every single time. Again, same thing, same side, it's almost like a concept lesson again. That's powerful, he's really soft, almost too soft, so make sure that you can hold your leg. So right now I'm holding my leg on the right side, cool, I'm holding my leg on the left side. Cool, just steady pressure, not asking him to move, just saying like, ah, oh, the sensation on my leg there, is that alright? Yes, okay. Now I'm going to tilt his head to the right a little bit, just that I got influence when I need it. Hind quarters, perfect, thank you. I didn't ask for that much, but it gives it to me and I'm going to reward him briefly. Just slight tilt and I'm applying some leg pressure. Not backwards. I'm keeping applying rhythmic leg pressure. I'll shake my toe for you to see it. I'm putting both legs on. I want him to walk forward now. Good oh boy. Good boy, just so that we can change the mindset from backing to hindquarters, please. I'll touch him on the bum. It's quite a lot of pressure, my boy. All right. So you see I'm breaching his threshold, so I go back to what he knows. Build your hindquarters for me this side, please. When your horse's feet is stuck, then and they get really tense and they want to buck with you, um, yeah, you don't have a good chance of achieving much success. Our focus is way too much on the bucking side of things today, so the right thing to do is really to boil things back down and uh, work a bit more on the preparation so that you don't have to develop any negative association between your horse and this experience. Cool, so he's relying a lot on this head movement right now and he relaxes really quickly when he does that. So I give him the opportunity and that's sort of the, the, the safety net for us right now. So now again, I'm applying reg pressure. Okay. Good boy. Now just shoulders. Good boy. Easy. All right. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Good boy. All right, so it's almost a bit much today to just get this thing started where we are. I'm gonna see how much he will allow me to continue with this movement. He must just get used to moving his feet forward. There we go. And forward. Good boy. And forward. 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 Okay. Forward. Good boy. So I ask him to walk forward and when he gives me a single step, I reward him for a single step. If I can get one step after one step after one step, I can start improving that to multiple steps. All right, let's go again. Forward. Every time he wants to turn his body, I'm just assisting him with the reins or, and or my legs. One step forward and I release. Cool, now we're we establishing a concept with forward walking. So, that's all right. Good boy. Instead of going in a straight line this time, I'm gonna ask him just to keep walking. Two steps, thank you, three steps, good boy. Not giving him a lot of time to relax with that too much. I'm jumping straight back in. Okay. Good boy, two steps, thank you.
There we go. That was a nice big step. Pressure, rhythmic pressure, rhythmic pressure and release. Rhythmic pressure. I tilted his head to the side there to get his body moving and I release pressure. So he's quite happy with me moving around on him and touching him and that's quite good. It's just a matter of moving his feet now and feeling that every time he lifts up a foot oh, it's like I might fall. So he needs to get used to this new balance and the weight on his body. Good boy. He gives me a shoulder step. It's not exactly what I was asking for so I just jump back in. Gave him a micro release just to explain like cool you move your legs I'm going to reward you. Fine, good boy. One step, reward. One step, two steps, reward. Good boy. We'll get moving. Just don't try and do things too quickly. You want to rush this phase, then you're setting yourself up for a lot of struggles later on. Good boy. Yes. Easy. Oh, back. Fine. Okay. He's really struggling with the movement on the saddle. So I'm just going to get him again to heal these hindquarters. Good boy. Can I heal your shoulders? Good boy. And now I'm going to use that opportunity right there. Good boy. Yes. It's essential that you become creative when you work with a horse and you use everything that you've got, so the things that you've built up to this point, to your advantage and play around with it and see what works and just try things and, and when the horse gives you an effort and tries to respond accordingly then you reward them for that effort. Just making sure he relaxes quite nicely after that walk and I'm going to extend the walk and if I can get a consistent walk right now I'm going to get off and prove to him thank you. Give him a bit of breathing time and then I'm going to get back on and then we're going to try and progress things a little bit more. Alright, so now he wants to walk off almost on his own accord back to his friends which is not what I was asking for so I make contact and then say okay you want to walk let's go. I release every time he's walking, so there we go. For the first time he gets what walk means. There's Aragon's walk for the first time. Nice big reward. For the first time he walked when I applied pressure and he kept the walk consistent for a couple of strides. Right there, dropping his head and neck and I give it to him. I'm really carefully reading his body language right now and then the moment he gets bent, so I'm just going to ask him to bend. I'm not trying to direct his direction of walking much right now. I just uh, apply pressure and we guide, unless he wants to completely stop and turn around. So he wanted to turn right and I just asked, guided him to the left a little bit. Let's walk. Good boy. There we go. Cool. All right. So now it's a real tricky thing to get a good balance between walking your horse and halting them. 
if I'm teaching him to go forward now and I forget to teach him about the brakes, then we're going to very quickly run into a wreck where, okay, I can go forward, oops, and then he starts backing and I've got no brakes because I haven't taught him that, then he's got no association or understanding of what those brakes mean or what these cues from the saddle might mean or when I sit down into the saddle, what I'm expecting him to do. So I'm teaching him to go forward first. I've got influence over his body, moving it in all sorts of directions now, which is good, his shoulders, his iron quarters. And finally, a little bit forwards. There we go, nice and walk. And every time he walks, I release pressure and I make sure I release his head as well, because the lower the head and neck can go, the more stress gets released unless he's rooting it to try and get the contact to himself and he can buck me off, but he doesn't know that yet, so. Cool. All right, so our, our first little bit of a ride went quite well. We got Aragon to walk on the queue a little bit better, so that was quite good. He got to understand that quite well. And now we're just going to advance to be walking more effectively and then also changing direction with walking. So just the moment I get back on, the first thing we're going to do is just re-engage with the body parts so that I can just establish some directional influence, make sure that I can bend his head and neck both ways so that if he does get stressed, like right there, he's already quite tense. So today it's not as smooth as the day before. Can you bend your head and neck for me, please? I'm not asking much. Good boy. He bends his head and neck for me and I reward him and I'm going to just walk that off for a second. Good boy. Alright, now we're going to get back on. He is starting to find it quite stressful. Which is not necessarily a good thing. But we've got a foundation and we've explained to him that we won't hurt him, so make progress. We're not going to make regress. We're going to make progress. Good boy. Every time I get on, especially in the beginning, I make really sure that I can control his head and neck. Good boy. And I wait for him to relax. And every time he relaxes, I'm going to reward him. Let's walk it off. boy. So I'm making sure I make progress when I go through this process. If you don't make progress, your horse learns to evade being mounted because they see, ah, oh, every time I get stressed or anxious and every time I move my body, you can't get on. And if you can't get on, then I don't carry your weight around. And it's quite a big step. Good boy. That's fine. Bring that state of mind down a bit. Fine. All right. Gonna get back on, and then we're just gonna re-establish and refine everything that we've done to this point. Uh -uh. Give me a head and neck. Good boy. Uh oh. All right. It's not a good mindset that he's in right there. So instead of asking him to do anything else with his body, I'm just going to ask his head and neck. When I put my left leg on, I want him to bend around it. Good boy. Yes. More. So instead of him going off in a straightforward movement and bucking me off, I'm asking him to heal his body for me. And then before I start moving around in the saddle too much, I make sure I've got a tilted head so that if he does jump off, that I've got some ability to just rein him in. Good boy. Now I'm going to reward him for that. I was... See, he's licking his lips. He really reads my intentions quite well. And if he can do that well under saddle, he's bending his head on his own accord there. Really, really nice. Good boy. I'm going to bend him with my left leg again. I'm applying pressure with my left leg and rein. So getting a little bit of hindquarter healed. I'm going to continue on that little journey right there. I'm going to just do a 360 with him. 
so that he really gets the concept about moving off of that leg pressure. Tilt his head slightly to the right. Good boy. Leg pressure to the right. Vocal cue. Cool. All right, that's a straight wall back. He's getting really tensed. Good boy. Good boy. We've got a foundation and he understands the cues. It's just about refining them and getting him used to move his body with my weight on top of him. So when you've got something good, like I've got the, the hindquarters quite well from the, from the left side, and uh, go back to that. Give him confidence to say, yes, like, dude, if you can do that for me, and anything else can be achieved quite well. It's almost like getting a bit of dopamine at first, or just by rewarding him. So he does something and then you give him a time to, to digest that information, then he, he gets a neurochemical release. So he basically resets his nervous system to a slight, slight extent. And then you jump back into the next exercise and then you build on that and give them rest and reward again. All right, so his ears are not tuned in to me at all. I'm really not 100% connected with Aragon this morning. Cool, I can heal these hindquarters to the left quite well. Bend his head and neck into the right, thank you. And hindquarters, please, my shoulders. Cool, good boy. And there we get a nice healed. Giving him a resting moment and engage again. Using a vocal cue. Four. Head and neck. Head and neck. He's bracing up a bit. Good boy. Head and neck. Hind quarters. There we go. He struggles a bit on that side. He's quite stiff on that side. So we're just going to be doing more work in the near future than on that side. So I'm going to ask him to heal his shoulder for me, his left shoulder, and then I'm going to ask him to walk off a bit. Good boy. And when he drops his head and neck in a calm state, not rooting his nose to get away from him, I'm going to reward him. He's rooting. Right. The moment he doesn't, but I'm going to just heal. Head and neck in, good boy. To heal the shoulders again to the, to the right. And there we go. Just walking off away from the side where we've been working the most, giving him a rest and reward in a new location. Whoa. Whoa. I'm trying to sit with my seat and ask him to whoa, it's not working well. And all that I do is just I bring the head and neck in because I've got influence over his head and neck like that. And I just start healing him. And then we get to a stop. Whoa. And then I release pressure. Licks his lips, he really understands that part quite well. I'm able to move my legs around quite a bit and if I ask him to heal his head in for me, I'll probably be able to stand up as well in the saddle and move around, so make sure that your horse is not too stressed about your actions on the saddle, otherwise you're not going to be able to achieve much much else. Good boy. It's a big step for you today, Aragon. First time riding in an arena, and I've not even established a proper foundation in the Picadero where I can... where I got to walk him and hold him all. Good boy. See, I'm not bracing up every time he moves his head and forcing him that he can only stay in a specific frame. If he's got a fly that irritates him, I allow him to chase that fly away. And after, after that, especially when I see he gets more aroused, I just remind him, just like, hey, just remember, we've got some influence over your body and I'm gonna ask you things. Back, 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 put the concept. Boy, that's quite nice backing. Hey, baby boy. All right, now I'm going to heal his shoulders to the, to his left. So he's trying to get influence over his right shoulder for the first time since riding today. And good boy. And then one step, and then I'm just trying to walk off again. Just getting our used. Like yeah, we walk. Good boy. Walking. Not 
for walking is the better thing to do and the easier thing to do. I'm actually turning him left now, which is quite a lot to ask. I'm just sponging the rain and keeping a right leg on, outside leg. Good boy, just to keep him going. Just coaxing him on. Good boy, I keep turning him left. As he wants to go to the right. And wool. I'm sitting down, wool, and then I start applying rain. Good boy. Give him a nice reward. All right, gonna ask back shoulders. Give me your right shoulder, thank you. Can I ask that again, please? I'm just supporting him with a with a head, with a um, hackamore a little bit. Good boy. Just as he wants to only walk off now, so I just need to make sure he understands the difference between applying leg pressure and assisting with the reins to get a shoulder movement like that. Good boy. Cool. Back. Every time he thinks forward and I did not ask him forward, I do the opposite. Good boy. Alright, we've got a right shoulder. Now we're going to get his left shoulder to move. I'm using the reins as an aid. We've got a good movement there. He's so much softer on the left side than the right side, probably because we've got a habit of doing more on the left than the right. It's all right. Right shoulder. Good boy. Oh, right shoulder. Thank you. Oh. All right, now this time I'm just gonna ask him to walk off straight away, both legs. Good boy. There we go. I'm just coaxing him on with the right rein. I just want him to walk more to the outside of the arena. And there we go. I'm starting to add a bit of left rein. Minimal pressure with the legs. I'm just using my shoulders, my body weight, and influencing it. <laughs> He's stopping without me asking. I was asking left instead of stopping and he didn't get that well. I only apply vocal pressure when I really need to, so... I first apply physical pressure and use my intentions and if that's not working then I go back to applying vocal pressure. Good boy. So he wants to be this side of the arena clearly, so I'm not going to be rewarding him this side, we're going to be walking back towards the other side in the top end. Good boy, that's a nice walk. The first time he's really extending his legs out whilst we're walking, which is I'm really happy about. I'm reading his body language so that if I need to heal them, I'm going to try and catch him before he does anything. I'm slightly coaxing him to the right and he's bracing up a little bit. Good boy. Still turning him to the right. Good boy. Quite a tight circle. Good boy. So I'm only able to control his directional movement from the beginning. We've set a foundation. So, cool. Good boy. All right. Just wanting to bend his head and neck in again. Good boy. Give me a bit more than that. Just to remind him, you want this, this is your safety, your handbrake. This is a young horse, remember, he's not used to being ridden. This is the first time he's walking out by himself, walking forward with the human on his back. He has to get used to the sensations of the body movement and different balance in his own body. If he's not responding well, I just take my hand out a lot wider. Oh. He gets irritated quite quickly by the flies. Doesn't necessarily help too much. Easy, my boy. 
All right. We've got some really nasty horse flies in this environment, so it's not necessarily the most ideal. He has got fly spray on him, um, but it's not necessarily the most ideal environment to start a horse in. Got all sorts of wildlife around as well, and really nasty insects around this environment. I'm just asking for a neck bend, please, my boy. So I'm not applying any leg pressure, and I'm not getting a, a proper head healed. So I'm applying a bit more pressure and just, there we go, I just made a bit of more radical contact on the hackamore there just to get him still with loose fingers. Everything I'm doing when I'm starting out is with absolute loose fingers. Like I can be riding him right now and bending his head and neck with literally just my fingertips of two fingers and even wool stopping him that way. So everything we do is developing softness and confidence and therefore I'm taking things super slow and easy. I know there's different methods out there in the world and people who do a lot more a lot quicker and I'm not against that. Just set your horse up for success. That's the only point. And with Aragon we've got no time rush as he's still quite young and I'm not going to be working him hard at all. Um, he still has a bit of development to do before we can start schooling him and teaching him all and doing portrayal. Introducing him to directional and energy influence from a human being on the ground with him and then also from the saddle. So right now I had a nice little right loop. Right now we bending him nice left loop. We're not gonna be moving on to a trot today, it's gonna be too much. When he doesn't hear what I'm saying, I really take my hand out wide to explain to him so he gets a proper clear sensation on the hackamore to know, ah, okay, means that side. Try a bit of outside leg, outside rein, both legs, good boy. All right, so this has been a big day, a big step for Aragon. I'm going to be walking him probably another couple of minutes and then I'm going to get off and that's going to be the end of his day, day's training. And then we have to follow up on this on the next day again, just to recap on what we've achieved and then we can start growing and going from a constant walk to walking and halting to halting and walking and then back to getting up into advancements of trotting and establishing directional influence and energy influence in all the gates that we introduce him to. If I want him to stand still, there's a difference between wall. Right there, I've got very little breaks. Good boy. I'm coaxing him down. I'm not forcing him to stop. I could apply a lot more pressure to get him stopped, but I'm just coaxing him down. And the reason therefore is right there, I get a back with my seat. And that's what I'm looking for. Good boy. And there he drops his head and neck. Good boy. Whoa. Whoa. Use a vocal cue as well just to help him. Like, whoa. Back. 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 Nice and steady back. Good boy. He gets to understand these things really quickly. Chewing and licking his lips. So he went off on his own accord there and I waited for him to commit to that and then I just redirect him like boom, I would like you to stand where I left you please, otherwise you building new habits that I'm not able to influence. Good boy. And wall back. Alright, so today has been quite a good a good lesson and we've established a lot more things in Aragon's riding foundation. We're able to really walk him forward quite nicely, um, which in the beginning of this session we were not able to get him to walk and he was very near the point of being a bucking horse and fortunately not. Um, so yeah, just getting him to uh, listen quite responsively to our cues and aids so I'm able to heal his whole body in every direction. I'm able to walk him forward. I'm able to halt him. We still have to work on the halting quite a bit and I'm able to back him up quite softly which is really nice and a good start to a foundation and able to bring the energy levels down once we are able to move up to a trot and then eventually a canter later. So yeah, there's quite a lot of things that we did today for him and for his little mind and 
first time that he's moving in an open environment with weight on his body, I really am quite happy with the achievement that we've got today. And there's no need for us to rush things too quickly as he's in no rush to become a performing horse. Thank you very much for making the time and uh, taking the effort to view this video and also more importantly to learn more and gather more information about working with horses, whether it is improving communication skills, new techniques and physical skills and abilities to enhance your performance or your personal relationship with your horse. So please, if you have found value out of this whole session and the uh, progress that we've been making with Aragon and getting to sit like I'm sitting on him right now, only being a, a second ride. Um, the first one was in the Picadero, now in the open arena, and he's quite in a relaxed state of mind and I can trust him to be on a loose rein and just hold for me. So if you want to see that progress and how we got to this point, um, and all quite basically within a matter of, um, I think, four days when I introduced the saddle, um, the first day and then we gave it um, oh then we rode him the next day and then we gave him a day off and now um, we are riding him um, yeah for the second time <laughs> trying to chase some horse flies away um, so yeah if you want to see that progress please subscribe to our channel hit the bell button so you get to see the next release forward not backwards forwards forward right not left Thank you. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, if you want to see that progress that we've made, of course it's not perfect. He's a really young horse. It's still only the beginning of his foundational education. Um, then hit the bell button, you can see the next release. And then also to leave any questions down in the comment section so that we can engage and help you help your horse. Thank you. Good boy. Yeah.